Hi, welcome to Crafted Sweetly. I'm Diana. Thanks so much for being here. In this video, I wanted to show you in a little more detail with some tips and tricks how I attach the photo, the strips to the edge of the pages to create a photo strip pattern for a book. So let's get right into it. In this video, as I mentioned, I wanted to show you in a little more detail how I apply the strips. I have done several different videos on um, how to create the patterns or different types of projects, whether it was like a miniature book or a vase that had this design on it. But in this one, I just wanted to show you just the application versus all the other stuff, which some of this is included in my other videos, but I thought it might be easier just to have this video dedicated strictly to applying the strips. For this, I start assuming you have the pattern. And for this, I am using a pattern. That I won't show you the final one in this video, but I will post the final project in my Facebook group so you can see what this is. It's a Christmas tree gnome and obviously all stretched out at the moment as you can see. And this pattern has the page numbers at the top and at the bottom and then also it um, has these thick marks right here which I'm going to use to know where to cut the strips. Some patterns that you have will have this line going straight through or you may have an ink saver version where the photo is not all the way through. It actually is in little strips per strip. So it'll have a little rectangle on each strip. In any case, you'll end up with strips and these you need to cut. And I use a paper cutter. It's called the Cutter Pillar Pro. I love this because it has a light. When I flip on the light right there, it gives me the line exactly where I cut it and then it makes it easy to line up the top and bottom. Now if you don't have a paper cutter, you can use a ruler and just place a ruler on the top and the bottom and then just use an X-Acto knife. But I do love this type of um, paper cutter just because of this light. It's, it's just awesome. So you can cut strips. Usually what I will do, I will cut this entire page into strips and then put a paper clip at the top of the strip so that they stay together per page. I don't cut the bottom off initially. I can trim this part because that's excess. But I do leave it on until I cut it through. And then once I cut it, once I cut the whole page, at that point I have all these together. This is my first one. I'll have all the strips together and then I'll just cut all this off for the entire page because I still have the numbers up here and that I don't take off until I actually apply the strip to the book otherwise they'll all get mixed up. All right so if you decide you want to score the page beforehand sometimes I do it sometimes I don't but if you decide you want to score these strips in the metal before cutting them you can do that what i do is i'll cut on this end the the not at the beginning but the the last page one because i'm going to mark the back of it so i want to start off with the edge of the strip and i'll place it down now these are half inch which means that i am going to score right here. I'm going to score this at the quarter inch mark and then I'll score it at the three quarter inch mark and I just go on the quarter and that's going to place my marking right down the middle of the strip. Do you need to do that? Not necessarily. It's up to you if you do. Again, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. If you do, it makes the folding a bit easier because you already have a line where it's where you need to fold it. If you don't, what I do is I will take the strip and this part can come off at this point because I have here are scissors. Okay, so at this point, this can come off because I have the number at the top. 
and then I just fold this over. Now folding it over may seem like, oh, what's the big deal? But I have seen a couple questions. How do you know, you know, how to do where to fold to make sure that it's even? I line up these two edges and then once they're lined up, I gently press it. I don't make a, a sharp crease on it just because I want to make sure that it's folded evenly all the way to the end edge of the or to the bottom of the strip and then once you have this gentle fold I guess we could call it that then I will take the bone folder and run it from top to bottom because I already have that gentle fold now I can fold it so that you end up with a nice almost like a blade And the paper that I use, that's another question. Um, the paper that I use is a um, presentation paper. It's a glossy format, as you can maybe see, kind of a slight shine to it, perhaps. I'm not sure. But it's, it's glossy, and it's called presentation paper. I think it's about 60 pounds for the weight. And I like it because it holds its shape. So once I open this, it's not floppy like copy paper maybe. So this is copy paper. It just feels flimsier to me. So this one is just a little sturdier. So what I'll do is I actually, this is my like third take on this video, unfortunately. So I will, I have applied a few pages here to my book. I've done four, so I don't need one, two, three, four. We'll take those off. And then I'll cut a couple more strips just to show you the process. So this I don't need because I've already done. One, and then I'll do two strips just to show you how, you know, kind of my tips on applying it. Okay, I've got the two strips. Take off the bottom. And I'll take the bottom off pretty much the, all, the entire pattern once I've cut the strips. I like to do these things assembly style because it, I just feel like it moves faster than cutting one strip and then folding it and then applying it to the book and then starting over the whole process. I like to cut all the strips. I like to trim the bottom, then fold them over. I will actually, I will fold usually about two pages worth of strips and then apply them to the book just because I don't have the space where to lay out 150 strips if that's how many I have for this. So let me do one more quickly and then I'll show you how I apply this to the book to make sure that everything turns out nice and even. All right, that's my second one. And if you don't have a bone folder, actually a credit card will do. Just hold it down and run it across. So that's the, a little trick on that one. And look how sharp that is. Okay. All right, turn off this light. Okay, so now the book that I have... As I mentioned, I applied two strips already. Let me switch from my paper cutter to the book folder, the book stand actually. This makes it much easier to apply the strips because I don't have to hold the pages. Now, if you don't have one of these, which I do sell in my Etsy shop, you can put something heavy on the pages. You know, you can use your phone or remote or something. Just be more aware that it's going to kind of pull the book in that direction. But you can do it, you know, that way as well. So let me make sure you can see. Okay. Right there. Um, so what I do next is I apply the double-sided tape. I used to use this kind of tape. Oops, that's yep, this kind of tape. Which is tape that has paper on one side but it's double sided so I would cut a whole bunch of it out and then cut it into little pieces apply it to the book and then take the backing off I found that 
this double-sided tape is actually faster. It's a little more expensive, um, but in the long run, the time it saves to just run this across instead of messing with cutting and removing backing, it's just much faster. So let's see if this one works. All right. So I just apply usually about, depending on how big the book is, about four to five different strips. I do not go the entire length of the strip just because that would use up a lot of tape. And I am on strip number nine. Okay, I still have the number up here. Now I can take this off because I know this is the one that's going next. And usually what I'll do is I will open this up to turn it almost like into a shelf. So now I've got 90 degree angle to the strip. Take the page and then I will put this underneath the page and this travels as you can see. It's almost like on a track. That helps because now I can make sure that it's all the way against the edge of the page and also right at the top of the page. So with my thumb, I press against this and then with this, I'm holding it right on the edge. Once I have it in position, I press this down because I have some double-sided tape there. And now I just go and press along here to make sure it's against the page and press down so that it catches the double-sided tape. And that's all it takes. Okay, so now this strip is all the way against the page. I've had um, members ask in the Facebook group, do I put double-sided tape on this side as well? I don't. I don't find it necessary to do that. My pages stay fine without having to, one, spend the time to do it and also waste more double-sided tape. Whoops, backwards. To use more double-sided tape to glue the back side of it. So I only do it on one side. So I'll just do this one other page. And again, I'll post this in my Facebook group and you can see the finished design in there once I'm done with it. Press even here, press down, and then I'm pressing against it and that way you end up with an even page so I have done let's see and occasionally I'll take it off from the stand and press it just to make sure that all the pages stay flush now what I do it with the the book once you do this sometimes you'll find that these pages will either once you finish the book, for example, these kind of tend to buckle like this. Or the other thing you'll find is that these pages nest within each other like this. Like that, you may have like three different pages so things don't look right here. You need to make sure that these are all separated and within, you know, like each one its own versus nested within each other. The way I prevent that from happening is, I'll show you in this book that I've done, is if you look at this book, it's one piece, okay? This makes it easy for, let me fold this out of the way. That's the nice thing with the stand is it will fold out of the way. Is if you give this book to somebody and they're not quite sure how to handle it, these pages may buckle, they may nest within each other and then you lose the design. This book, look, it's one piece. I can, it does not move. And the way I achieve this, and I have a video on this as well, I add the stabilizing cardstock on the bottom of the book. You cannot see it, but it keeps the book together. It's easier to handle, easier to transport or ship. So I always add this to the bottom of my book. So again, in this book, I only did some of the pages, but I will try and finish this and then post the finished project in the Facebook group. If you have any questions, comment below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.